with certain people you do like a, a coolness check and you just oh, tell yeah. like a really a really horrible joke or a racy <laughs> joke you know yeah. like to check their temperature to see how cool they are do you we remember just, what the joke uh, was not something i could <laughs> tell on air you know i don't want to get canceled again <laughs> Hey, it's me, Jesse Lee. Thanks for tuning in to The Jesse Lee Show. I'm your host. You know, that makes sense. I think I think I'm the prime candidate for hosting The Jesse Lee Show. You know, a little bit of nepotism involved, maybe, but, you know, I'm here. Uh, we got Johnny Hawkins on the podcast this week from the band Nothing More. This one starts off pretty heavy. Johnny dives in right away to the details that surrounded the incident last year with his ex-girlfriend. Uh, and how, what caused the band to kind of go dark there for a little while. He uh, also gives me the details about how the scorpion tail works. If you've never seen the band live, if you're not familiar with the scorpion tail, he's going to break it down for you and give you a visual. If you're just listening, we're going to paint a, paint a picture for you of this giant OSHA violation contraption and how it works on stage and all that goes into it. We also get into a lot of uh, talk about fitness and health. You know, it's a little, little side piece there for all my fellow avocados out there if you are enjoying this episode please make sure to follow subscribe do all those stupid buttons mashing things you need to do on all the different platforms you're consuming this on if you're on spotify please go ahead and leave me a five-star review if you don't mind if you dig this episode and you decide to share it on your social media make sure to tag me let me know i want to know who's out there consuming jesse lee you know all right oof. yeah yeah choose some better words uh all right well let's get into it well dude thanks for taking the time to chat with me man i uh congrats on hitting number one on the octane biggins with if it doesn't hurt hey thanks man that's Thank fantastic you. i know you guys hit pause there a little bit like musically over the last couple of years so it's gotta be kind of relieving to come back with this track and just have such a big outpouring support from the fans yeah um i had been sitting on that track for uh, close to, I guess, over a year. And so I, I was so anxious just to like get it out into the world. And that's like the, it's like the best and the worst feeling when you know some, you got something in your back pocket that mm -hmm. no one's heard and you're really stoked on, but you have to wait for everything to align and everything to get in order. Um, so that was challenging to kind of hold it in. But once it was out in the world, it, um, we knew it would do well, but, um, I think, it did even better than we had hoped. So we're really excited. Cause like you said, we've had such a, a kind of a challenging climb back out mm -hmm. of COVID as many people did, um, where we, I don't know, it was just like, it felt like an uphill climb and then, you know, had all kinds of crazy stuff happen after that. And then it's just been, I don't know, it's been crazy getting back to normal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Did it so like, I know a lot of times for an artist, especially if you have a song in your back pocket like that for so long, and you're always excited about the new thing. You're always excited about the, the next thing you're, you're doing. So when you have a song like that, that is obviously an absolute banger, but you have to wait like a year or two to release it. Do you still feel that same kind of excitement when you finally drop it on people? Yeah, yeah. There's definitely like a, a second wave of uh, excitement and yeah. joy. Um, but yeah, you kind of forget about it for a little while and then you're right. like, Oh wait, yeah. So, oh yeah. The hook this. was good. <laughs> yeah. I did like this song. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you, uh, break down kind of like the writing process for that one a little bit? Yeah. So, um, that one was different than a lot of the tracks we've done. Um, usually most of the music we've created has been um, some form of me bringing an idea or Mark, our guitar player, bringing an idea and then either the band hashing something out and then me approaching it and kind of almost semi producing or like messing with what they've done and yeah. directing in a different direction or me bringing an idea and them kind of trying to put it into their language and their terms. Mm -hmm. um, but we usually work on everything together. Um, this one was a little different because I flew out to LA and worked with this guy named Drew Folk, who's his producer name is Wizard Blood. Um, he's Epic. an exceptional person in the music industry. We just fell in love with Drew and just great person to work with. So 
that was my first time working with Drew and then Zach uh, Servini, who has worked on a lot of stuff from uh, God uh, Grimes to Bring Me the Horizon to Young Blood, I think to Justin Bieber. I don't know, just like all yeah. over the. He's one of those guys behind the scenes that not a lot of people probably recognize the name, but they've definitely heard his music or his production rather. Yeah, yeah. Um, just incredibly talented guy. And so it was just me and, and those two guys in a room in LA. And I just flew out for two days and, and Drew wanted to try this and just be like, hey, let's just see what we can generate together. Um, and we just moved at like lightning speed. It was like that whole song, the majority of it, was done in like eight hours. We pretty much were oh, just wow. like boom, 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 creating ideas were bouncing back and forth. And then uh, I took it back to the guys. And at first, they, to be honest, they were kind of like skeptical because it, it was just a very different process than they mm. were used to. They weren't a part of the process at the beginning. So they, I think, were maybe a little resistant to it, which understandably so. Um, but then when they finally got their hands in it and they got to put their flavor on everything and kind of add, you know, their creativity and writing to it, then it kind of became a nothing more version of what we had created. So, um, yeah, that's how it started. But it was uh, created really when I was uh, at the end of this six and a half year uh, toxic relationship and I was still in it at that time. And I was just in a very dark kind of mm -hmm. place. And, and w b before I go into this story, I, I want to point out um, when all this crazy stuff came out with my ex trying to kind of defame me and trying to make things look way worse than they were publicly um, and kind of tarnish my reputation. I, I wanted to tell you, thank you for being fair. Cause I saw your take on it oh. uh, online yeah. And, and it wasn't like you were, you know, trying to really take a position or kiss my ass or, you know, or mm -hmm. take a side or anything. I just felt like it was it was just a fair version of just presenting what was going on. And, and I really appreciate that. I wanted to tell you because there's a lot of people who were not fair, yeah. um, who were very, um, you know, just they wanted to jump on, get the clicks, get the get the juice and then. You know, at, at at no care to what expense, the expense or of who's you, gonna yeah. be hurt in the process. Yeah. That's really cool, man, because I honestly didn't even know you even saw that video. So that's really cool that that was even on your radar. But uh yeah, I mean yeah. <laughs> when something like that comes out, you know, because my content, if you're familiar with it, is like a lot of like it's news, but like it's entertainment news. So I throw jokes in there and I make you know, little, little yeah. you know, jabs at people when when it's lighthearted stuff. But yeah, when it was something like that, that kind of story, and I knew that it had so many different levels and it wasn't cut and dry. Like this is what happened. So I was trying right. to like present both sides of it. But again, yeah, not drag you because I know that it wasn't like from w what I could understand from the situation. It wasn't what was being portrayed out there in the, in right. the media. So I was just right. trying to be fair to both parties, not do any kind of victim blaming or anything like that, you know, but right, right. still, yeah. And yeah, I, I, I'm, Glad that you uh, saw from that point of view <laughs> as well. Yeah, no, no, I, I appreciate it, man. It means a lot because that was my first time in my life that I'd ever been through something like that, mm -hmm. uh, much less something like that publicly. You oh, know, yeah. I had so many people reaching out to me who had been through, you know, crazy exes and crazy divorces and just, you know, life stuff that just never becomes public because they're not in the public eye. So I yeah. had a whole other layer of uh, life experience to deal with. But uh, so that was an interesting experience to say the least, just to navigate yeah. and try to figure my way through it. And, you know, there's all these people involved, um, not to focus on this too much, but I no, did want to address it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like you got, you got, three other band members and a manager who's like a business partner with us that we've built this thing from day mm -hmm. one. It's like all these people's lives are affected as well. You know, that's, so it's this. <laughs> that's it's always this my thing. Anytime any band member gets canceled for any reason, it's always like, I get it. I, if, especially when it's something that is like not confirmed. It's not even like, it's just like alleged and somebody tries to cancel a band member. It's like you're, you're canceling a lot of people in that process as well. You're, you're affecting a lot of careers, a lot of people's livelihoods because of one 
hot take from somebody that you don't agree with, you know, it's like it's can be very detrimental, you know, to a lot of people. It's like it's a spider web effect that a lot of people don't really take into consideration, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I'm, you know, so many people just will read a headline or whatever, and then the damage is done. That's all it takes. Like they just move on with their life. There's too much going on. They don't have time to look into it to see what's Mm -hmm. actually true or not. And there's a lot of people, uh, much like my ex, who will take advantage of that. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they feel hurt or whatever. So they just want to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, because I remember the headlines literally were saying nothing more singer Johnny Hawkins runs over a girlfriend with car. Like, that was it. Like, you can't just put that in a headline. <laughs> and like, you got to yeah. have some subtext there, man. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You're going like, to you're gonna naturally just, the human knee-jerk reaction is just going to be, you know, you, you're going to... Yeah, because who's going to side with the guy that hits somebody with the car, right? Like, that's... You know, like, yeah, yeah. Back, you know? It's like, Jesus. technically, yeah, it happened, but not like that. You know what yeah. I mean? It was, anyway. And it was... Uh, anyway, it was just a fucking crazy experience. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, w- like anything in life, you can, you know, be at peace knowing that the truth usually comes to the surface given yeah. enough time. Um, so I just had faith in the truth coming out, you know, whether it's slowly or quickly, hopefully quicker than rather than slowly. But Do you feel like that has kind of gotten <laughs> out there now? The truth has kind of prevailed yeah, as far yeah. as like, the audience goes? Yeah, yeah, it it, it has. Um and it was really wild to watch um, just like the Reddit threads and how deep people would go. Like people mm-hmm. were digging up stuff. I never thought they would have the time or the energy. But of course, you know, never underestimate the internet. And yeah. Um, so it, which actually worked out great. I was like, I was wanting people to dig because mm-hmm. if anything, the worst thing that could happen is people not dig and, and not right. look into it. Um, Cause I was like, I, I, I'm okay with the truth. The truth is actually going to help me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, um, so yeah, people on the Reddit threads and just everywhere just dug things up and yeah, eventually it, it came to light, but it still did a ton of damage. And what's crazy is that, uh, you know, it's not something that I've al- uh, dealt with alone. It's something that I've seen many people in the public space, um, mm-hmm deal with before me but it's always one of those things you're like oh that'll never happen to me you know what i mean right i'm not a um, kardashian like i don't have to deal with this kind of stuff right you know? <laughs> right right um so it's just crazy man and people can just kind of get away with it so that's the sad part but i don't want to focus on it too much no, but I, I just yeah. wanted to point that out because it did relate to the song and it mm-hmm. was um that's the headspace that i was in where for like a year I was stuck with this person kind of at gunpoint, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like where there was these subversive threats about this and that, but it was always done in a way that was like, there was this level of deniability built into Mm -hmm. how she would word things. And so I kind of had this looming threat in the back of my mind for like a year and a half. And I was, you know, in that headspace, just trying to reflect on, how I got myself in that position, you know, the choices I made, um, you know, the character judgments I made and you have to take like accountability and reflection when, when you step in shit in life, you know? Yeah. And I definitely stepped in some shit and I, uh, you know, in that process, this song just, you know, burst out. It, it, like I said, it was in like one working day, the song was written. And pretty mm-hmm. much done. It's great because it's a super relatable concept too. Because I don't think anybody out there has not been in some form of a, a toxic relationship. You know, I mean, not only anyone has like that sparkle clean of a track rec- dating track record. You know, everyone's right, been, right. and whether it even be dating, just you know, toxic relationships in general. I mean, I dude, I remember right. dating real crazy girls in the in the past. Like, like I <laughs> had this one girl that was like a literally a ticking time bomb in social situations. Like I take her around and it's like, I start my <laughs> clock. Like, all right, we got about 45 minutes here. And then I know what's going to happen. We're going to have to start moving out. <laughs> you know, Dude, and you, just, I know you feel exactly the energy be sucked out of the room, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh so. my God. Um, it's so, it's so amazing. It's such a breath of air now, like where I'm at in life and the experiences I've, I've had since then. 
and just being around really pleasant, uh, amazing people and stuff where you're like, Oh, right. I don't have, I don't have to deal with that. Like that's yeah. not something I need to make excuses for or something I need to manage or, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times, you know, people can use your, uh, you know, I don't want this to sound like I'm like playing no, a victim or something because I don't view myself that way. But I do think a lot of people can relate to how other people can use your empathy against you. Yeah. You can try to relate to people and go, you know what? I understand why they have that quirk or this dysfunctional behavior because they had a horrible childhood, childhood mm. or they had this horrible experience happen to them. And like the, the softer part of you can relate to it, you know, because mm -hmm. you've had your own traumas or things right. that you've gone through. So, um, but then it can be very quickly used. So um, it's <laughs> tricky moving into the future. Uh, you know, a lot of the lyrics, even in that song, it's like, I'm always trying to learn from what I go through and turn it, turn shitty things into gold. You know, it's like, yeah. it doesn't have to just be this shitty stain in my life. It can actually it, it, to me, it's like, it's always a gift, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's like, what's the gold in it? What can I, mm -hmm. how can I turn it into something? And so in exploring that, I was trying to learn just like how, you know, like even the lyric in the song, like if it doesn't hurt at all, then it doesn't mean a thing. Like how we search for meaning in stuff. And, and sometimes even the more toxic or challenging situations with people, like there's this trauma bonding that occurs mm -hmm. through that process. And even though it's dysfunctional at the time, it's, it, it's some kind of clue to how we work. And I was thinking about that and I was trying to understand it when writing that song. And that's where those lyrics kind of came from. Yeah. And it's funny how like you can, like you say, you can kind of become almost conditioned to this mentality, especially if you have like a couple bad relationships in a row, like you just think like, that's, you know, what it is. Like, this is what, relationships are you know and then when you finally do get in something healthy or at least when you're out of that you're like like you said that breath of fresh you're like oh oh is this what it's supposed to feel like like am i supposed to feel love like <laughs> like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not supposed to feel anxious as fuck all the time like, okay right, right. Like, wow <laughs> like yeah when i met my wife and like we started like i bring around my friends and stuff and everyone's like she's great i'm like Oh yeah, I know she is. You think so too? Cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how this is supposed to work. Sweet. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. No, I can, I can totally relate to that. Um, oh man. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first <laughs> track from the upcoming album, right? Um, this. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So this will be the first single um, that we released. Um, we didn't know at first if it was going to be on this album or if it was just going to be some kind of bridge uh, to the next album. Okay. That explains we the had, hesitation there. I'm like, wait, I, <laughs> my yeah, yeah, we information had, here that I'm not supposed to. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, I was just thinking, uh, yeah, yeah. Like no, two or three good. things at once, uh, as yeah. the creative brain, sometimes I'll have little <laughs> moments, but, um, yeah, yeah. So it's the first single and we're going to be dropping another single coming up here like a week and a half for a week before uh, our tour coming up with wage war so we're gonna have another song drop and i can't wait very cool this podcast is actually gonna because i know about this track that you're dropping i have the inside oh, okay, source okay. and this uh podcast will actually be out after that song if you want to okay. talk about it a little bit it's up to you oh okay cool gotcha gotcha yeah 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 so yeah so our next single uh after you know if it doesn't hurt uh house on sand is our kind of our opening track on the album. Um, Very cool. In the music video where <clears throat> we decided to do the full intro, uh, it's the track called Carnal, which is the title track of the album. And we wanted to kind of do an art piece uh, going into the song, into the music video, and in kind of a throwback way to ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, when we came out with This Is The Time, it was kind of our breakout single when we first got signed and we had the, the ocean floor intro into this is the time we wanted to do something similar. Um, and so we did carnal into house on sand and, uh, yeah, it just kicks the album off really strong and really, uh, aggressive. Uh, so we're, I don't know, we're really pumped about it. Finally. Get uh, it out dude, there. I'm excited. I haven't gotten to hear it yet, 
but I saw that we're uh, we're premiering it on Octane again. This I'll, by the time this podcast is out, I've, I've already been premiered. But uh, I saw it in the uh, the lineup, and there's a special guest on this song, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. So we got Eric from I Prevail on this one. Uh, Which is awesome. That was <clears throat> really exciting. We became friends with him out in Germany when we were playing um, some shows, or actually Germany and Switzerland. We played some shows with them and Disturbed. And just hit it off, man. And on his off day, he came out to one of our shows in, I think it was Munich. Mm-hmm. And we had this, this club show. It was like packed in there. It was just sweaty and just nice. one of those dingy, but awesome rock shows where everybody was going wild, having a great time. It was just a, one of those nights I'll never forget. And yeah. afterwards, like he was hanging out backstage with us and we were just, just goofing off. And it's like one of those things where, you know, when you, with certain people, you do like a, a coolness check and you just oh, tell yeah. like a really, a really horrible joke or a racy <laughs> joke or something that right. you're supposed to like, you know, yeah. like to check their temperature to see how cool <laughs> they are, like, or if they get super offended and, yeah, you know, um, and he was just cool as shit, man. And do you remember just, what the joke uh, was? Cause now I need to know. <laughs> oh no, not something I could <laughs> tell on air. You know, I don't want to get canceled again. You know? Um, Keep yeah. the one cancellation this uh, I, career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep my cancellations down. Um, but yeah, yeah. So we hit it off and we were like, dude, you should be on this song. We hit him later and we're like, I think this would be the perfect track for him because it's got that heavier edge to it. And his style of screaming is very different than mine. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it, it worked awesome. great. And then he flew out to LA and we shot a music video together. And uh, yeah, that's that. So cool, man. That's that's a great collab. I love that idea of you two guys being together and just the two bands together. It's just a good combination. Do you have a favorite track off the... Because the new record is actually done, right? You've recorded the whole thing? Um, or are you still working on it? Yeah, yeah. No, it's done. It's we, done. Uh, we have turned everything into the label. That was like this huge weight off my back uh, yeah. recently because I'd been... I don't know. It's just like when it's in that last month or two of getting mm-hmm. all the little details buttoned up and all the revisions and it's just super stressful. Um, and so I'm, I don't know. That's like been this huge weight on my shoulders for the last year and a half. So yeah, this weekend I'm going, uh, downtown Nashville and I'm fucking oh, yeah. having a good time to celebrate. <laughs> you know, it's been a long, long year with that. Nice. Nice. What's your, what's your celebration of choice? Just go out a few drinks at a bar. Yeah, I like to hit up Red Door uh, in Nashville. That's kind of... I find that I run into a lot of industry people there. Really? Um, okay. A lot of writers, producers, bands, or artists if they're in town. Just seems to be like one of those spots where it's very serendipitous. Yeah. So I end up... Uh, I like going there a lot. Um, but I don't know. It's uh, Nashville. There's so much to do, and I still kind of feel like a newbie here because I moved here uh, about a year ago, but I've been on tour like maybe more than half that time. So every right. time I'm here, it's still like a fun explore your backyard kind of situation. Yeah. You're still getting to know it for sure. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I moved uh, into this, uh, um, we built this house out here um, about a year or two ago. And like, I have a, a five-year-old, so like, I don't go out as much, you know? So yeah, there's a lot of bars yeah. around here. I still haven't hit yet. I'm like, I, I feel like that spot's gonna be cool one day when I have some more free time. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah. <laughs> Where were you at? I'm actually in Cleveland, uh, in uh, Ohio. So, Cleveland, um, yeah, it rocks. I hear, yeah, yeah. Dude, actually, uh, you... oh, go ahead. oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say the uh, the first time I saw you guys live was at the uh, Alternative Press Music Awards here in Cleveland. I think like man, 2017 oh, wow. or something. Yeah, I was oh, super wow. hammered yeah. walking around. I was just like frolicking around, <laughs> dude. I went to this award show and I seriously watched one band perform the entire time. It was your band because I was like frolicking around, hammered, just like talking to people, like flailing drinks around. And then I see you on this giant fucking crazy Terminator thing, like just wailing around. And I'm like, what am I seeing? I, I, I thought I was like imagining something. And like, yeah, <laughs> you, I had to stop and sit down and watch your sex. It was, it blew me away. At the yeah, time, I think. Was- it was called like the Basinator back then, possibly. Uh, so we had two uh, devices, and th- the one you're talking about was the Scorpion Tail. Okay. That was our pet name. Uh, the other one was the Basinator. It was just mm. our goofy pet name for that one. That that was a 
something we strapped the bass guitar into and it would do like oh okay we do okay like gotcha three man bass solo but so uh, the thing you're using right now is the scorpion tail too right yeah yeah we're not using it at the moment on tour it's kind of in the shop and we're there's going to be like a version 3.0 or whatever uh in the future our, our bass player started building this giant like 20 foot tall drum light robot thing that was powered by air compressors and like just wow. some wacky shit but it's it doesn't it doesn't make sense yet to <laughs> finish the project it's going to probably take another 50 to to 100 grand to finish wow. it and it'll only really make sense maybe after the next album cycle mm -hmm. um, just with the the size rooms and the requirements you need on stage. There's all these logistical things, but so there's some things in the works for later, yeah. but, uh, but right now, yeah, we're just kind of focusing on uh, the new music. Cause we have so much of it and we only have so much time in a set to narrow it down. And this new album, I mean, obviously I'm uh, close to it and I'm sure every band says, Oh, this is our best album yet, but this, truly is our best album yet um yeah and we have i want to interview the band that's like this is our shittiest album um <laughs> like, we're, we're okay with it i guess we'll yeah. put it out <laughs> move past this one um yeah no no i'll send you a i'll send you a little private link if you promise please not to, yeah i won't leak it. it i'm gonna leak it on the nothing more uh reddit i promise <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah somebody there's a leak somewhere i gotta find oh, really? out who it is but yeah somehow our our album artwork ended up on reddit and mm. some other stuff, and I was like, "Motherfuckers!" So I got I got to do some uh, witch hunting later. Yeah, yeah, do some takedowns. Yeah, yeah. With the, uh, can you uh, explain to anyone that hasn't seen Nothing More Live what <clears throat> the Scorpion Tail is? Just because I want to give people a visual if they haven't seen the band live, especially if you're not using it on this, this next tour, because it is crazy. It looks like like a giant bop it. And a lot of people say like, <laughs> "Is he really? Is he really even like playing?" Because yeah, like an extreme metal version of a bop it. And a lot of people ask if like, is he really playing an instrument on there? Is he just dancing on this thing? Like, yeah, so can yeah, you kind of yeah. walk people through it? Yeah, people, I remember for a little while when it was like first, um, I don't know, one of the videos kind of like picked up online and there was a yeah. bunch of arguments in the comments. And I usually don't really get involved or try to defend myself because it looks a little... Um, I'm almost just like, let people yeah, figure it out. But, you're above it. But with sure. this one, it like kind of pissed <laughs> me off a little bit because I was like, no, like we worked really hard on this stupid thing to like actually be a real MIDI controller. It's not a prop. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, it is a MIDI controller. Like our, our bass player, Daniel went through, you know, pulling his hair out for months trying to deal with problems because it was a real instrument. Mm -hmm. with all these sensors and the MIDI translation through the brain, sending it to the computer. But basically, it a lot of people just would talk like they knew what it was and they were totally off. It's a it's an effects controller, really. It's not generating the sound. It's manipulating the sound of the guitars mm -hmm. and the vocals. So the vocal and the guitar and the bass are all, when we hit a switch, they go through a computer. And then I'm controlling that computer with the Scorpion tail. So it's just like a glorified guitar pedal. Right. And so it's when giant. they hit like a chord, <laughs> I'll, I'll push one of the levers and it'll pitch bend them up like a whammy bar does, or it'll pitch them down when I hit the other lever. Yeah. And then when I hit certain buttons, they'll uh, mangle the sound or like repeat it or stutter it or echo it. And so it's just like a glorified effects controller pretty much. How tall is that thing? Um, when it gets up in the air, I don't know when my, I guess like it's, it's close to around where my head's at. So I'm probably like 15 feet in the air. I don't know. Do you, you ever get like scared? You're gonna like fall <laughs> off it when you're playing. Um, I, I, yeah, maybe at, at the beginning at first yeah. it was a little, and it was a lot more rickety. I, like yeah. I, I my bass player, I was like, is this thing going to like, come unlatched and do this. And he's like, it shouldn't. And I was like, that's reassuring. <laughs> Hopefully that's not what I want to hear. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks like a giant OSHA violation. So I could see it being a little uh, intimidating at first. <laughs> oh, it, it's uh, yeah. It, it has not passed any regulations. <laughs> oh um, man. Well, I, I imagine if you did fall off, that might be the worst show you've ever played. 
Um, yeah, but do you yeah. have a I, worse show in I mind? I did have it fall oh. on me once. It fell um, on you? Yeah, well, it was, uh, and this was totally my mistake, um, total brain fart. Because like when I'm, when I'm in the show, I just go to muscle memory. You know, you're in the moment. Mm-hmm. You're, I'm not like thinking super consciously, but I, I'm just very into what I'm doing. And I remember before the show, Dan was like, hey, just a heads up. Um, we don't have the scorpion tail mechanism locked in for today because the it had an, a, a clearance issue with the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stage was a little bit a lower hanging ceiling. And so I was like, okay, but every time in that moment in the set, I would go grab it like this and I would lean back and hit the trigger mechanism that would launch me oh. upward. And nice. so it wasn't connected. It wasn't like linked to the heavy part. Long story short, I just went and did everything like I always do. I just, it's like it went at one ear and out the other because I was in show mode. And I just went and grabbed it and I leaned back and the whole thing just falls on me. I'm just like this cockroach on his back, you know, stuck. Yeah. My bass player's like, oh shit. He throws his bass around his back. He's trying to, you know, dig me yeah. out of the rubble. And then I just oh. jumped up and started jumping on it uh, and just made it part of the show, you know, just out of anger, like a yeah. like a caveman or something. It was fun. I like the uh, the mentality there, too. It's like, hey, this venue is a lot smaller, so we've decided to make this dangerous construction even more dangerous by not securing <laughs> Like, that's the only <laughs> option. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, you guys have been doing the uh, the crazy stage shows for a while now, right? Like you kind of started really putting your a lot into your live show, like right from the beginning, right? Yeah, ever since the beginning. I mean, I think it's because we we were so DIY for years. Um, we were one of those bands that didn't sign a deal for a long time, and we were just like, we're going to do it on our own, and and because of that, we would just take a lot of shitty gigs that we would just try to leverage into better situations later we play like a lot of dive bars or places where people didn't want to hear us they didn't know who we are they didn't care mm-hmm. they didn't know the music so we Use were always noise. thinking like how do we get their attention you know how do we get them to yeah. look and not just want to hear like a cover song so uh we would we originally started with like this four-man bass solo where at the time we had two guitar players and so our two guitar players, Mark and Josh, and then Dan were all playing the bass at once. And then this was back when I was playing drums. Cause I was originally the drummer in the band um, before I started singing. And I would come to the front with drumsticks and become basically the fourth person just drumming the bass, almost yeah. like a hammer dulcimer and they'd be fretting it. And it was just like this cool little fun showpiece that we had built up and, it always got people interested. And then, you know, from that was like a leverage point into getting them to actually check us out or listen to the music and stuff. So we took a little bit of that mentality with us into the future. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to do something unique at, uh, or at least do something to kind of stand out a lot of times. It was a good, especially like, you know, with so many bands active now, you know, it's even more of a challenge, but yeah. And especially in the live scene space, if people aren't there to see your band, it's hard to kind of capture them with just the music. Sometimes you gotta have some kind of visual to, or some kind of funny joke maybe on stage. Like, oh, that was that was funny. Like, I'll check these guys out. You know, yeah. You guys have yeah. been kicking since like uh, 2003 is when you first formed. Back when you were playing drums, right? Yeah, and and just to put it in perspective, 2003, um, that was like what my sophomore year of high school or something. Oh wow! So I started the band in seventh grade. So we've been together a long time and i was the drummer um i started the band with my our original guitar player josh and -hmm. then mark joined the band uh soon after and so i've been with and then dan soon after that uh in high school so i've been with dan and mark since high school and yeah it's been forever What do you think was like the turning point for you guys when you finally like, cause you have been grinding for so long. Like when was it like, Oh, okay. Now this is like, this is going, this is the we're off to the races now. Um, well, so when I started singing in 2008 or nine, somewhere around there, that was a big turning point, but it, it still wasn't, it wasn't apparent that we were on to 
like a successful path yet. It was still mm-hmm. kind of like a question mark. Um, it wasn't for maybe another two years that it really started like clicking and picking up. And we came out with the few not fleeting, uh, which was the first album I sang on. And then well, I think when it really clicked was when, um, we, uh, made the self-titled album. So we moved into a house together and recorded and wrote, uh, everything. Uh, we also did some writing with a guy named Scott Stevens at the time mm. and a guy named jo- Jason Rauch, who's the guitar player in Breaking Benjamin. Um, we did a song with him. I think the Matthew effect, but anyway, long story short, we, we did all these label showcases and we got, mm-hmm. we got passed on by all of them. Pretty much every label. We drove to LA and New York and did showcases. They all said no. And I'll never forget. We were driving back from New York city to San Antonio, which is a long ass drive. And the, some mechanism in our sprinter van at the time went out. It it was like a very computerized engine. So the fastest we could go was like 40 miles an hour, the entire (laughs) drive home. And then even up up uphills, sometimes we get down to 20 miles an hour, man. It was brutal. And we had, you know, like no money at the time. We were, mm. we were scraping by. So that whole drive home, I was just kind of like boiling. You know, I was like, yeah, <laughs> all this doing. time, this hard work. I know we're a good band. I yeah. know we, we, we're going to make it, but it's just like the universe was kicking me in the dick is what it felt like. And so <laughs> I told the guys, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Let's move into a house. Let's turn like the garage into the live show thing. Let's turn my room into the studio tracking room. Um, I have a laptop. I have speakers. We can do this. <clears throat> I had <clears throat> siphoned some money out of a college account with a loophole <laughs> to just invest in recording equipment. I took like one semester online just to yeah. justify using the money to buy a microphone and a computer. Oh, yeah. It's a recording anyway, class, right? <laughs> it was very scrappy at the time. I had to find a way. <clears throat> and then... So at that moment, we just, we went and recorded the self-titled album. And so Mm. we got signed after releasing sometime soon after releasing that album and everything uh, pretty much changed after that. That's so awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's a great, like, you know, moment too, is when it feels like this cards are stacked against you in life. You're like, all right, we're doing this. Like we're, we're going to make this happen. We're going to make some changes and we're going all in like, yeah. basically go in or bust essentially do you have any yeah. advice for like uh any newer bands coming up now like i know it's kind of a different landscape than it was when you guys kind of uh, started getting going with the record deals and stuff but do you have anything like if a band came to you now and say like, hey what should we be focusing on what should we be trying to do man um yeah i think the landscape changes and the tools change uh obviously tiktok wasn't around when we started yeah but it- but it was still, you know, MySpace was the big thing when we first started. And then Facebook, you know, took off and uh, Instagram became a thing. But um, <clears throat> it's way more video culture now than it was. But I think the principles are still the same. Um, you still have to stand out. I mean, you're still, even then, I felt like we were fighting a battle of standing out or having some kind of an edge mm-hmm. against the thousands and thousands of other bands out there trying to get your attention i think it's probably even harder now like the tools are easier like the the ability to like the technology is easier and better but it's but but which means you have more competition now everyone can do it like whereas when we were doing it like we went through a lot harder barriers of Mm. entry and so it actually did us the favor of filtering out a lot of other things. Um, oh, damn. Everything okay? That's a crazy lightning just strike. Yeah, there's oh, supposed to be some you... huge storm hit Nashville today. Yeah, we're getting, we're supposed to get in Cleveland today too. It's supposed to be like tornadoes and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, lightning. See, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, that was lightning. <laughs> oh, um, so, hopefully our call lasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think my advice would still just be to, um, don't, don't blame anyone else if you're not succeeding. Um, just take it as a sign that you're not good enough yet. Nice. Um, because even if that's not true temporarily, it'll still just make you better. Yeah. And inevitably it'll be like, 
you'll succeed, you know, even if everyone else is still catching up to where you're at. Um, I'd say that just always assume you're not good enough yet and keep pushing to be better. And then the other one is just, if everyone's making a TikTok video, like in this particular format, like, yeah, maybe there's some low hanging fruit. You can do it the same way and get, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, do what's working for sure. But always be thinking on how can you be doing it differently? Right. How can you stand, <clears throat> how can on you it? stand out from everyone else mm-hmm. and just not think like they're thinking. So that's the part that takes a lot of courage and guts. Cause in order to do that, you're going to have to do dumb stuff that fails and things that p- people think are maybe dumb or silly or whatever, but who cares? They're not going to remember anyway. Like just keep moving forward, keep trying stuff. Yeah, people don't people don't think it's cringy once you're have a number one song and you're uh, making millions of dollars, and all of a sudden you're everyone's best friend at that point. <laughs> no one's making right, fun right. of you. Yeah, it's it is funny because like you know back in the day, obviously to get signed to a record label, you, you had to like stand outside of a, a record label office and like hand out demos to anybody with a tie to walk by and hope someone picked it up or like play showcases and tour. And and now it's like like you said, the barrier of entry is so low, like. You can reach a bunch of record label ears and eyes by posting a video that goes viral, and you got you know bands that will complain like, "Oh, I don't want to make content. I just want to make music." And it's like the, you have such a golden opportunity here that people back in the day had no like even chance to reach some of these eyes and ears. But like you said too, at the same time, there's so much, uh, so much noise out there. There's so many of these bands doing that that you, it's got you got to do crazy things to kind of cut through and kind of stand out. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's something that stands out too. With uh, another thing that you guys have kind of incorporated, just become kind of like a staple of your live show and your presence is the body paint too. When you play shows, you've got you know the red and black body paint, and I think that's something else that will draw people's attention when they when they see you live. Like, oh man, like this this guy went all out tonight. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're always looking for again ways to grab people's attention visually or sonically Mm -hmm. and um, you know, in an endless scrolling culture, you want something to look different on that scrolling, you know? Yeah, absolutely. um, You know, my mom was a painter and she taught me, you know, art growing up. Like she was kind of like the person in my life who taught me really what an artist was and, and, how, how to, I don't know, just even paint or draw or even music. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of took that with me. And even though I don't really paint a lot um, today, Except but that's kind of like my outlet to do it da- uh, <laughs> yeah. daily at shows and stuff. Yeah. How long does it take to put on? Um, about, about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what I'm doing. Um, sometimes it's really even shorter than that if I'm like yeah. in a hurry. Nice. And then it takes about, yeah, about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to really get off and get clean. And so it's a pain that's, in the ass. But That's commitment, you know, man. That's a huge time commitment for sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> Everyone, when you, see, when you see Johnny looking all dope <clears throat> as hell wearing his paint, you know, just remember, like, he put some hours into that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And just come on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking <laughs> by the of last, how... the end of the last tour, um, sorry, just a little fun fact. Yeah. We, we just toured Europe with Electric Callboy. And uh, we played some shows out. Yeah, great band, amazing band. But we, uh, by the end of the tour, man, I was starting to get like rashes and stuff because my skin was just getting so irritated from the pain. Oh, yeah. So by the end of it, I was like, man, I'm kind of cutting it close here. Like, we've got three more shows left, and I'm just like, my skin is not having it. I assume, like, uh, like you're not using like the paint you put on walls or something like that, right? This is like no, a special. No. <laughs> it's not. I'm using lead based paint. That's the stuff you're supposed to use, right? Is that why uh, I feel so crazy? Yeah, yeah man. It's, just, it's the uh, the lead's good for you. It really uh, makes you strong. It makes you really tough. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's an essential mineral. Speaking of man, how do you stay uh, so fit on the road? Like, what's your diet and exercise routine like? Or are you just like naturally gifted to have abs? Um. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to stay, what's the word, um, in an ideal state on the road. I'll say that, Mm -hmm. but honestly, um, so there's, there's two things. There's like types of 
fit in regards to like how adapted you are to like, let's say running two miles really fast. Mm -hmm. That's like a specific type of adaptation and then there, or, or lifting a certain amount of weight. And then there's visually aesthetic fit, which is really when people say that it really just means lean because like the leaner you are, the more, um, there's curvature to the muscle. There's more, um, it just visually cast shadows differently, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm probably in more of a balanced health when I'm home um, and I'm doing like weight training or, or jujitsu. And oh, I'm nice. really doing the bulk of my training at home. When I'm on the road, it's more about maintenance because yeah. I don't really have the energy or the time to do workouts like I do at home because I want to save my energy for the show. So I'm more worried about maintaining, like not getting, not losing too much muscle uh, because basically I'm doing cardio every night on stage. That's kind of my workout is. Yeah. So really you probably burn a ton of calories on stage, especially yeah. around the scorpion tail. Right. So really, <laughs> I'm, I'm really just leaning out more on the road. Yeah. Um, so it's just maybe the work that I do at home shows more. So it's not really about what I'm doing on the road as much as mm-hmm. what I'm doing at home and then how I'm maintaining that on the road. That's good, man. I'm glad you're able to find that balance. And yeah, and because I mean, obviously, I, I assume health and fitness probably is a big important factor for you in life and overall mental well-being, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, it's um, it's been something ever since I was young. You know, I, I played sports growing up. Like every season, my dad forced me to play a different sport. He's like... You, you, I'm not going to tell you what you have to play, but you have to pick mm. one. That was yeah. like the rule. And so <laughs> that was a big part of my upbringing. And as I got, you know, we came out with the song Jenny a long time ago, and that was one of our big connecting points to a lot of people. And that song dealt with mental health. And I found that there's like this big blind spot in kind of the mental health conversation where everyone ma- wants to make it about therapy or um i don't know like philosophies or prescriptions Mm -hmm. or drugs or foods and all that stuff definitely needs to be a part of the conversation but i think one of the biggest like cornerstone uh keys to it all is bodily health because your brain is literally a part of your body so if your body Mm -hmm. is healthy your brain is there's a 99% chance it's healthy. And I, yeah. and I know even for myself, when I, when I keep my body healthy and I focus on fitness and diet, 99% of my mental health problems go away. Oh, so yeah. it really is like a silver bullet for most people. And mm-hmm. I think we've just kind of made the mental health conversation way more complicated than it needs to be. Um, right. It's just because people don't want to work out or they don't want to adjust their habits with how they eat or how they sleep or how they work out. Um, there's all this room for people to like take advantage of it and prey on it by selling you something that's really not going to yeah. change anything. It's a whole placebo market anyway. Oh that, yeah. Because I, there's no I'll money in selling. Box. No, you're good, man. <laughs> I hundred percent agree. I mean, there's no money in selling the cure, right? It's, it's about selling the, what's going to keep you sick sometimes. <sighs> and like, oh, yeah. And I, I agree, like, you know, when I work out, if I'm super stressed and like I'm like, or feeling down or whatever, like when I just go balls out at the gym and like really just exhaust myself, have nothing left, like it really does change your mood. Like if you've got, if you're exerting so much energy in this one thing, it doesn't leave a lot to harbor a lot of the negative energy for other things. You know, I think that is something I know yeah. a lot of people like say they don't have the time or the money to eat healthy and work out. I mean, there are definitely little changes you can do. And, and like you said, dude, yeah. I mean, yeah. just, if and you just take 30 minutes to run around the block, you know, <laughs> or that's do a, what you can around the block. If you can't run, just like, you know, move your yeah. body. Huge difference, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's just a, yeah, that, 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 even that saying is such a lie. I mean, mm-hmm. people have the time you make the time. Right. It's just like, you have time to brush your teeth because you make the time to brush your teeth. You, right. you have time to, do certain things because you make the time, but that's a big, I think to me, that's the biggest hurdle for most people. And even myself for years was yeah. just being like ironclad about the boundaries in my life of like, right. this is the, 
the time for my body, whether I do a hard workout or not, even if just today, mm-hmm. I'm just stretching. I'm literally yeah. just stretching and like, but that time is for my body, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I, and no one can like cross into that time because at every moment, man, like if, if you're thinking to yourself, you don't have time, man, if you could look at my schedule, I have like a thousand unread emails. Like I have yeah. 500 unread texts. I have a long list of my manager and agent and the label and people in my personal life calling me all the time, wanting blah, blah, blah. Like if I can do it, anybody can do it. You just yeah. have to like say this time is sacred. No one can cross that boundary. It's for me. It's for my health. And then again, it's like whatever you want to do in that time is kind of like the fun part. Like, yeah. oh, maybe I want to box today. I want to hit the bag or today I want to go to jujitsu or I want to go to the gym or I'm just going to take a walk today that maybe it's as simple as that, but it's your, you know, anyway, that really helped me. Yeah. So, sure. No, I think that's a good point. Like a lot of people think like, oh, I don't want to work out. Like I don't want to lift weights or I don't want to go run in the treadmill for 45 minutes. It's like, okay, don't, don't do that. Find something else. There's gotta be something right, that you like right. that's active. Like you said, boxing, swimming, ride a bike, you know, stretch, even dude, stretching is so underrated. The, the amount of people that like, don't even just like stretch their body every day is like, yeah. You, it's like, dude, you only get one body. That's that's what it comes down to. You get one body, <laughs> and if oh, you're yeah. not gonna fucking treat it with respect and you know use it and 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 work it out and <laughs> make sure it lasts you, like, and the, the time thing too. It's like that'd be like saying like like not going to work because like oh well I didn't have time to put gas in my car or you know change the oil so I'm just not going to you know I don't have time to do that. It was like, <laughs> well, you you found the time to do it right? You know, it's like right. buys the same way. Yeah. Man, you gotta find the time to put the healthy food in there. You gotta find the time to stretch it out every now and then, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and you'd be amazed at, um, I'm so sorry. There's a You're good dude. You got to run. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm jump. They're, they're trying to get me on this other call. Oh, uh, dude, I'm so I'm, sorry. I didn't realize yet. Uh, um, a time frame. Let me just, yeah, they, we had a call at 12. All good, man. I, I've really enjoyed talking with you. Um, dude. Yeah, me too, man. Um, but, let's, yeah, yeah we can one. wrap it up here. Um, yeah. Do you have any uh, final plugs before we get going? Yeah, man. Uh, we're just we're gonna be uh, we're on tour with Wage War and uh, Sleep Theory and Vela Maya, and it's gonna be just it's insane. Just so Hell much yeah. energy every night. Like such a great lineup, and we have um, so much new music coming everyone's way. So keep your eyes open. Go check out House on Sand. Uh, check out the music video. We're so excited about it. Uh, anyway, we'll see you guys Very out cool. there. Very cool. And connect with uh, Nothing More Music on all the socials, right? Yep. Yep. Hit us up. Uh, Instagram's kind of like our main spot, but, uh, you know, everywhere else as well. Very cool. And uh, I've been Jesse Lee. You can find me at Jesse Lee on TikTok and Instagram at Jesse Lee Show on X. And make sure to share this podcast episode with somebody that doesn't suck. All right. <laughs> Take it easy now. <laughs> and uh, bye bye.